So making the shopping list is the easy part, knowing what you need to buy. The hard part is the discipline that it requires to stick to that shopping list. I've done this recently actually, and I found that I only spent about 50 to 60% of what was my whole monthly budget. Forget all the two for ones, forget all the discounted price. This is how you know if you're getting a good deal at the supermarket. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So in these times that we're living in where the cost of living is continuing to go up and up, particularly the cost of eating, whether that's going to a restaurant or going to the supermarket, we're all looking at ways to cut back on our budget, I'm sure. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you my tips and tricks, and I've got a lot of them, on how I've been saving money on my food budget every month. So let's get right into it. Tip number one is eat out less. Now I'm a big fan of eating out. I love to eat out from time to time, but I try to avoid doing it excessively. I try to avoid doing it regularly because you know, over time that adds up. If you think about the cost of eating out where it might cost you between 15 to 20 pounds, euros, dollars per person, wherever you are, compared to the cost of making a meal at home, which might be only two to three pounds or two to three euros per head, then the cost savings are massive. And if you eat out on a regular basis, then that really is gonna add up and your opportunity cost is gonna increase and increase. So I budget an amount every month and that is my allowance for eating out. And I really try to stick to it because that way I can maximize my savings on food. The next tip is also related to eating out and it's something that will help you keep the costs down when you eat out is to take advantage of offers and deals in specific restaurants where you might want to eat out. Maybe for example, Domino's has a two for one offer or you get free delivery on Uber Eats if you're looking at takeaway. One of my favorites personally here in Spain, we have a restaurant called Cien Montaditos and this is essentially a place where you can go and you can get a load of mini burgers known as Montaditos and every Wednesday and every Sunday at the moment, the majority of items on the menu are all one euro. So that means you can go there and you can pretty much eat um, loads of mini burgers and you can eat for about seven to eight euros there. So that's a really good opportunity uh, to save money, but still enjoy eating out as well. Third tip I'm gonna share with you is for when you go to the supermarket, it's a really good idea to sign up to the loyalty programs of whichever supermarkets you go to. You can sign up to more than one. I'm personally signed up to a couple of them of the supermarkets that I go to, and that can give you uh, access to exclusive discounts, which might be good um, savings opportunities from time to time, or it might generate points or savings in your account, and then you can use them to pay or, or pay less money in a future shop. I did this with one of the supermarkets that I go to recently, Carrefour. I generated about 20 euros of saving over a period of several months and I was able to use that 20 euros um, to pay for part of my shopping. So I essentially got a 35 euro shop for, uh, how can I not do the maths on this really quick? So I essentially got 35 euros worth of shopping for 15 euros thanks to those savings. In addition, if you're with a credit card or you're with a bank that has specific discounts or cashback offers, if you shop at certain supermarkets, this might be a really good opportunity to take advantage of. For example, I know with my Wizink card, I can get cash back at certain supermarkets here in Spain. And also Vivid, one of the digital banks with cash back. Uh, I also get cash back in supermarkets with that, sometimes up to 10% with some of the super offers. Now, if you wanna sign up to Vivid, I've done a video on that and I'll leave a link in the video description both for the sign up and for how the service works. Really, really important when you go to the supermarket and this is the next tip is don't go on an empty stomach. Make sure you've had something to eat before you go because if you don't have something to eat and you go hungry, then any little bit of food that you see will look appealing and it will more likely than not end up in your shopping cart. Like this chocolate from when I went to Carrefour earlier. I went to Carrefour earlier when I was hungry, saw the chocolate and the rest is history. Really good. Don't tell the trainer at the gym though. The next tip I'm gonna share with you, you're gonna say, yes, Johnny, this is common sense, but how many of you actually do it and stick to it? And that's make a shopping list. Now, I admittedly struggle with this, as you'll have just seen a few seconds ago, is sticking to the shopping list. So making the shopping list is the easy part, knowing what you need to buy. The hard part is the discipline that it requires to stick to that shopping list. You have gotta be disciplined so that you don't buy more than you need. And how do you know you're not buying more than you need? Well, that brings me to the next tip, which is to plan your meals in advance. If you plan out your meals in advance, whether through an app or whether on a piece of paper, 
then you know in advance what you're gonna to need to buy in order to be able to make those meals. You know what quantities you need and you know exactly which ingredients you need. So it reduces the risk, it reduces the temptation to buy more. This is something that I've started doing recently and I downloaded an app called Meals Up, which has really helped me with this. It's free to download from the app store. There is a premium version, but I'm on the free version for the time being. And it essentially lets you uh, prepare a list of meals um, and then generate your meal plan based on that. You also get to put in the ingredients and I think in the premium version, it helps you to generate a shopping list as well. But I, I haven't gone that far yet. But anyways, the app itself, by being able to plan out my meals over the course of the week, I know what I'm gonna buy at the supermarket and not gonna buy too much. All right, this next tip is the real way to get deals at the supermarket. Forget all the two for ones, forget all the discounted price. This is how you know if you're getting a good deal at the supermarket. And that's a look at the cost per unit of what you're buying. Now supermarkets, they'll promote on the quantity or they'll promote on a, a discounted price, how much you get off. But if you really look closely at the cost per unit, then you'll see if you're getting a deal. Some of the supermarkets here in Spain, for example, Mercadona and Carrefour, they both put the cost per unit in very, very small print on the price tag. If you look very closely, uh, I'll put a picture on the screen and you can see that. If you go to a supermarket where they don't put that, then it's a very simple calculation. It's just take the cost of whatever it is you're buying, divided by the quantity, and that will get you the price per unit. So by looking at how you can get the cheapest cost per unit, that is the best way, in my opinion, to save money and get the best deals on what you're buying at the supermarket. And my last supermarket tip that I'm gonna share with you is related to fruit and veg. Now, it is common to buy fresh fruit and veg. For example, I buy fresh bananas and I often buy you know, fresh fruit. However, when it comes to vegetables, I tend to buy frozen veg. I tend to find that the cost of frozen veg is slightly lower than the cost of fresh fruit and veg. Not to mention, of course, it also lasts longer and it reduces food waste. Now, food waste is essentially a hidden cost of going to the supermarket because you might buy a load of fruit and veg or you might buy food, it might expire, you might not use it and you end up throwing it away. But if you're able to use all of that fruit and veg because you bought frozen, like I do, for example, then that reduces your food waste and it helps you, again, save money and buy only what you need without buying excess and having to throw stuff away. So for that reason, I like to buy frozen vegetables like broccoli, like peppers, like onions, like garlic. I tend to buy these things frozen. Now, the next tip I've got for you is a challenge and it's to clear out your cupboard, your fridge, your freezer of any food that you've got right in it. And when I say clear up, I don't mean immediately throw it away unless of course it's out of date, it's expired, it's gone off or whatever but try and use it to prepare your upcoming meals. This is a really good exercise. It clears you out of stuff that you've got in your fridge and freezer, but you may be not using. It also, of course, puts your supermarket spending somewhat on hold or reduces it at least. I've done this recently, actually, and I found that I only spent about 50 to 60% of what was my whole monthly budget, thanks to going through my freezer, my fridge, my cupboards, and clearing out some of the older stuff that I had in there, which was still good. And the only money I did spend at the supermarket was ingredients, uh, other ingredients, so that I could make the dishes that I wanted to make with what I had left over and what I was trying to get rid of. And again, it's really useful. Uh, it helps reduce your food waste. It helps you realize what you do like and what you don't like, or if you buy too much of something. It's also good if you're trying to make changes to your diet, because once you've got rid of everything, you're essentially starting from scratch and you can buy all the new stuff that you need. My next tip is something that I've been doing for years and years and years since I've been living alone pretty much and that's to cook in bulk very rarely unless i'm making like ravioli and tomato sauce will i make food for just one meal at a time if i'm making like a curry or I'm making a bolognese or I'm making a paella or a jollof rice yes you heard me right if you know you know if you don't you need to find out i'll cook all these meals in bulk and i'll divide them up into portions so that i have food for the next few days and that leads me on to the next point which is freeze the food that you don't use so like these portions, I'll put them in the fridge or in the freezer, depending on how long they're gonna be there, because I can then go back to them and eat them later. And by cooking in bulk, it means that you can buy your ingredients in bigger quantities and generally, in a lot of cases, get a better price as well. And this doesn't just apply to cooked food. You know, if I buy chicken to make food, then I won't use necessarily all the chicken at once. So the chicken that I don't use again, I'll cut it up, I'll put it in freezer bags and it's in the freezer, I can go back to it when I want it. Same with bread, bread freezes very well as well. So I'll often buy a few baguettes at a time, um, get the baguettes on that I need and those that I don't use, I'll put them in the freezer. Just remember to get them out the freezer when it's time to eat them though, because if you have a meal plan and you forget to unfreeze stuff, then kind of ruins the plan. And the last tip I'm gonna share with you today is especially helpful in this time where 
uh, things like olive oil and sunflower oil have been scarce in quantities or have significantly increased in price and that's to reuse your cooking oil. So you can reuse cooking oil and again particularly as I just said where in countries like Spain where we've seen a shortage of sunflower oil and we've seen prices increase this is a really good way to save money by reusing your oil and making your supply last longer. If you are going to do this though there's going to be residue and there's going to be bits of whatever you were maybe frying or cooking that's left in that oil so just make sure you put the oil through a sieve or a filter um, to get out all the, the little bits that are left over from whatever it was you were previously cooking. Also if your oil was burning if it's been at a very high temperature and was smoking the last time you're cooking it then maybe not something you want to reuse. So just two things to keep in mind if you are going to reuse your cooking oil. Hope you enjoyed this video and found my tips helpful. Leave a comment and let me know what do you do to save money on your food budget. Now why not check out my other videos and if you like this one and you want to see more content like it then make sure you hit the subscribe button with a notification bell so that you don't miss a single update. I'll see you on the next one and let's get this money. Oh it's chocolate. Oh well. Don't mind if I do. <laughs>